Where does this crisis go from here? And what are the military options? We uh, spoke about it a little bit there with Mr. El Nahar. Douglas Ollivant has served in Iraq. He was the director for Iraq at the National Security Council during both the Bush and Obama administrations. He currently assists U.S. companies to do business in the country and also works as a security expert with the New America Foundation. Thanks for being with us, sir. So what are the military what are the military options here? First off, for the government of Nouri al-Maliki in confronting this ISIS advance, in your opinion? I think the government is doing what it needs to do. It's bringing up uh, what it considers both more reliable and more motivated troops from its base constituency, the Shia South, up to fight this uh, you know, invading uh, ISIS army. Um, it looks like they're about to converge somewhere north of Baghdad. All right. And so what about the United States? I mean, does it have a strategic interest in getting involved more than it has by simply perhaps cooperating on a strategic level with uh, the government, uh, having some sideline discussions with Iran? Does it need to get more involved militarily if it deems ISIS a true threat to its own security? I think you hit on it exactly, both because ISIS is a threat to our own security, totally exclusive of the state of Iraq, but also because we have interest in Iraq itself. Um, it may be uh, a good idea for America to loan our air power to Iraq in this moment of crisis. And loan, what do you mean loan? I mean, would it be that they would conduct operations on behalf of the Maliki government? No, loan was a poor choice of words. For the United States to conduct airstrikes uh, in support of Iraqi troops on the ground. Do you think no that's American going boots on the ground? Right. And do you think that's going to happen? Well, it's it's certainly possible. We now have an aircraft carrier in the Gulf. Um, we may have uh, some planes that could range there anyway from surrounding bases. Um, so it's certainly possible uh, as to what the, the president and the White House will decide to do. Uh, your guess is as good as mine. Well, now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the genesis of all this. So many have pointed fingers at the government of Nouri al-Maliki. But fundamentally, when the U.S. invaded in 2003 and dissolved an entire army, a big one for the region, including basic police force presence as well in some parts of the country, is that not what set the scene for what's going on today, this Sunni anger and militants that joined al-Qaeda in Iraq for years before morphing into what we're seeing now? Well, if you know, we can go far back and blame all kinds of people. If we want to go back far enough, we can blame the British for 1920. Well, certainly, well, the United States. Well, this is a little States bit more recent than Britain in well, 1920. It is, it with, is. But let's keep respect. moving forward. Right. But the, the <laughs> dissolving the army in yeah. 2003 did not help. Yeah. It did not help. Um, you know, the the rule of Saddam Hussein did not help. Um, more recently, the inability of all factions in Iraq, not just the government of Nouri al-Maliki, but all factions to come together and resolve their political differences is certainly not helping. Um, none of this changes the fact that you now have this largely outside army, perhaps with some local um, Iraqi auxiliaries, so to speak, but you do have this ISIS terrorist threat that's coming into Iraq. I think we need to keep, there, there are two threats here that are closely uh, related or two problems. One mm -hmm. is this ISIS threat that needs to be dealt with. And even if Iraq didn't exist, this is still a problem for us. Right. Closely related to this is the dysfunction in Iraqi politics, which has made Iraq uniquely vulnerable to ISIS right now. We need to deal with the first problem right away as mm -hmm. ISIS is moving south towards Baghdad. Once that problem is dealt with, then we can take a little more leisure to figure out how we do fix the admittedly dysfunctional politics in Baghdad. All right. It's going to be a big question as to how you, you contain this ISIS advance, this expansion into so many other cities. Quick last question on news coming out today of the arrest by the United States inside of Libya of a suspect uh, in, they, they believe masterminded the attack on the consulate, the American consulate in Benghazi, Abu Qatala. Uh, strategically important or not? I don't think so. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm overjoyed he's captured. I'm overjoyed that he's going to face justice um, in the United States. But if we think that this is going to change what's happening in Libya or change the uh, the arc of extremism in North Africa, um, we used to call this in Iraq whack-a-mole. You know, you get one, another will come up. This is not going to have a huge strategic effect.
Again, uh, overjoyed he's captured, though. All right. Thank you uh, very much for joining us. Uh, Douglas uh, Ollivant in Washington, D.C. Uh, thanks for your take on all the day's news and this important story also out of Iraq and the Levant.